Welcome back. A former top Ethiopian government minister, Birkit Simon, who at one time wielded a lot of influence, has been arrested over the alleged misuse of public funds. Mr. Birkut has served as the communications minister, overseeing the country's media output and at times acting as a government spokesperson. Local media reports that he was picked up by police at his home around the same time as another senior official was arrested. They are both accused of corruption in relation to an endowment fund in Ethiopia's Amara region. An Egyptian factory is recycling plastic bottles, turning them into fiber that can be used to make mattresses and upholstery foam. The Ferris polyester staple fiber factory is among the few emerging recycling factories that reuse plastic bottles to make fiber, which is then used to make polyester fabric. Take a look. An Egyptian factory uses recycled plastic bottles to produce polyester fiber as a cheaper alternative to cotton, after the country's cotton crop witnessed many hiccups. The Ferrous Polyester Staple Fiber Factory is among the few emerging recycling factories that reuse plastic bottles to make fiber, which is then used to make polyester fabric. To make the fiber, Plastic bottles are shredded and melted before being transformed into threads. Threads spin in a machine with hot water poured over them for cleaning purposes. Then they're stretched, dried, and finally transformed into fur-like lumps of fiber. There is plenty of raw material, but we need state support when it comes to raw material, especially by reducing imports. Egypt's most famous export, the silky soft cotton prized by makers of luxury bedding and clothing, has become scarce after its production fell over the years. In 2016, agricultural production of Egypt's high-quality long staple cotton hit a more than 100-year low. Recent government exports are helping boost production, but manufacturers say purchasing cotton remains expensive. This is where polyester fiber is filling a gap. Manufacturers say polyester made from recycled fiber is increasingly in demand in the market and is being added to the once pure cotton fabrics used in textile. Recycling factory owners believe that the cheaper fabric can fill the supply gap caused by the decline in Egypt's historic cotton industry. The factory started production last year with production reaching 1,800 tons of fiber monthly. Waste management consultant and CEO, Lagos State Waste Management Authority, Loma, joins us now in the studios to discuss this further. Good to have you on the program, sir. Thank you, Tony. Mr. Ola Oresonia, it's good to have you. So I'm sure you agree that that was pretty impressive, but yeah. bringing it home, are we close to what Egypt is doing in terms of recycling? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, when you benchmark with Africa, I think uh, we, have only a slightly, we were slightly ahead of Egypt some time ago. Uh, maybe we were back. We we've gone back a bit now, mm -hmm. but uh, we were slightly ahead of uh, Egypt sometimes. Uh, we have uh, similar plants here. We, we have uh, companies that are doing these fibers here, yeah, and uh, uh, we have at my 12, I mean my 2 in Lagos, a very big factory, and um, turning uh, most of the PTs into fibers uh, for uh, jerseys, uh, textile materials, and for uh, furniture making purpose. And uh, that's why you have the price of uh, PET going higher uh, in Lagos and in Nigeria right now because uh, there's a demand for it right now. And uh, sometimes we're uh, exporting the flakes. And, uh, but you have a factory right now uh, that has been converting this into useful materials. But do we have enough support to run this? Oh, well, um, before now, I, um, uh, I think in um, 2007, 2008, there was a buyback program um, that uh, the Ghost government started then, whereby you pay for pure to sachet that you mm. bring on the street or the PET bottles, away, and the government was paying. And uh, we were putting that and uh, giving the recyclers then, all right, so that uh, the recyclers can turn them into something very useful. So government provided infrastructures. 
and uh, we have a lot of uh, social entrepreneurs uh, that have already developed from this. We have their names uh, all over. We cycle us, uh, uh, recycle points, and many of them uh, that are doing so well on that. And uh, we also have uh, the EPR law uh, by NEVRA, the Extended Producer Responsibility Law, uh, that's allowed a form of alliance. Example for uh, for those who are using a PET for packaging, uh, we have a Nestle, we have Coca-Cola, we have some of these groups. They form an alliance, and uh, they're supposed to um, pay uh, for the buyback system and uh, pay a token to support those who are recycling, like uh, the company like that in Egypt. So that's an EPR guidelines that, that provide a kind of support for, for that kind of um, uh, program. And uh, it's been done successfully well. Uh, in Europe, and um, I think uh, the EU example is what Nigeria is picking up to make sure that recycling can be promoted through the support from both the alliance groups and uh, from um, from governments that yeah, provide infrastructure. Let's ask this obvious question: Is there money to be made in trash? Oh yes, um, uh, with the support of government, yes, you can make money from it. But uh, without the support of government, no, uh, because just like you watch that documentary. And uh, what the guy was talking about is about moving the waste. It is what you have collected efficiently well that you can turn, uh, you can convert to other things. So mm -hmm. government must be efficient at collection point. Government must be efficient at collection point, either directly or through the private sector. And uh, whatever you gather there, then you now take it to a point where the recyclers can now turn it, uh, convert it to other uh, basic use. So whatever you see on that road, really, nothing is waste unless you waste it. Mm. But how can these wastes be utilized? Oh, well, for example, that's the first one you saw there, PET. Mm -hmm. uh, you have for paper. Um, paper can be reused. And uh, when you look at the waste can generally, the dry waste and the wet waste, everything in the waste can can be converted into other things. It's got to do with the knowledge and uh, the will and uh, the technology that you have to deploy uh, to do all this. So everything in your waste can can be converted to other useful material. Okay, just final question. Is there a positive future for waste recycling in Nigeria? Yes, there is. And I think uh, the, um, uh, the salmon on the um, on circular economy is now being domesticated by the Nigerian Economic Summit Group. Uh, so the circular economy program is being implemented right now. And I think that's a driving point for recycling because it's about a backward integration of what you discarded into production lines. And I think that is the basis, uh, actually, for our recycling in Nigeria. And I think that's a bright hope for recycling in Nigeria when we have done the collection effectively well. Waste Management Consultant and CEO, Lagos State Waste Management Authority, Mr. Ola Oresonya. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you for My joining pleasure. us on Network Africa. Thank you very much. Well, that's it on the program today. Thanks for watching. I'm Tenny Ola Shubawale.